Hey there. Well, today was a pretty grueling day. I went back to my house and uh, in order to cut the grass, of course, only to find that someone had stolen my lawnmower. Thanks, guys. Uh, and also grab another van load, and this time van load and trailer load, of things that need to be moved. And this is one of them. This is a tube tester. This is one hell of a tube tester. It's pretty big. Hey, Rutherford, give them a size comparison. Yeah, it's pretty big. It's rack mount. It is a Weston 686, specifically a Model 10A. And uh, this is quite the fancy beast. Weston, of course, was a uh, large maker of meters. Um, okay. Well, yeah, obviously. Yeah, there's a good old 30, Model 301s. And the 269, yeah, meter geeks will, of course, know what those numbers mean. And, of course, they have uh, nice custom scales in them. But uh, they also did make some test equipment. And this is probably their biggest, baddest thing, or close to it anyway, the 686. Now, I'm not sure when these things were originally made, but I do know the Navy purchased them way back in the mid-1930s. They called them OD. O is an open, not O is zero, but OD, a model OD. They had a series of them, and a friend has one from, I think, 1934 or 1935. That's what the tag says. And uh, they placed them on capital ships in shore stations, larger shore stations. Um, and, uh, well, they used them for quite a long time. Of course, that is until the uh, TV series came and uh, was kind of a little bit of a better option. Because, as you can see, this, this is not something you can take up to the transmitter or receiver that you're repairing. You have to take the transmitter or receiver, or at least the tubes, down to the shop where this thing is because it is heavy and big. Now, this particular one being gray is a pretty late one. Here's the tag. And a little bit of doodling there. Yeah, this is kind of an as-found condition. I bought it at an auction some time ago, a long time ago actually, at one of the radio meets. And I uh, haven't really done anything with it, but I probably ought to do something with it. In any case, it needed to move uh, to the place here. Look at all those sockets. And yeah, you will see this is a pretty late one because it's got a socket for sub-mini tubes. Obviously, the, uh, the 30s versions did not. Um, in fact, I don't think even the very earliest ones had octals, or loctals for that matter. But you can see it's got pretty much the full range of sockets one would, one would uh, come into uh, finding. See, one's got a socket saver there. Looks like uh, the others had socket savers at one point, but uh, someone has removed them. And you can see, yeah, they're, they're, this thing's going to need some repair. There's some busted switches and so forth. Now, like I said, this is one hell of a tube tester because you'll notice with all the controls, this is what one could call a parametric tube tester. And that means that you can control just about everything. The truth of the matter is, even um, your, your standard tube testers, the type that um, you find at radio shows and radio sha and, and ham shacks and such like that, you know, like the Icos or the Heath Kits or even the higher end ones like the Hickox, the TV7s and such like that, they're kind of garbage. They really are. Um, there's kind of an old saying that, that those tube testers they will let you know if your tube is bad, but they might let you know if the tube is good. Um, the test that those things put on a tube is pretty crappy. And, uh, yeah, it's, you, should, you should almost never trust one of those tube testers absolutely completely. They're good for weeding out bad tubes. And, of course... As a lot of the uh, veteran radio and TV restorers know, that sometimes bad tubes still work. Anyway, if you really want to know how to do or how to test a tube, 
you can use one of these things, a parametric tester. And like I said, you can control just about everything. You can see controls for all the elements. It'll let you know grid current there. Obviously the GM, that's the big meter there. But the, these are uh, things like uh, the plate current. Um, yeah, a TV7 doesn't really let you look at that directly, but this will actually let you do that. And another thing is, instead of a bunch of setup switches, you use patch cords. So you can pretty much test just about any tube. The, the downside is, of course, you have to set it up. <laughs> you kind of have to know what you're doing. But this thing will really let you know how a tube is doing. See, it's a rack mount device. And this is, like I said, uh, as found condition. I really haven't done anything with it whatsoever. Let's look at the back. I don't know what the number four is for, but it's there. Right, yeah, you can see kind of dirty. But we have some nice big rheostats, rheostats, some nice big transformers. These are real things, real transformers. If you look at uh, the transformers in most tube testers, <laughs> you'll run away screaming because they look like garbage. In fact, a lot of them are garbage. But have a little uh, chassis here, which is uh, for setting up uh, the actual real test conditions. And uh, some tubes are missing. I'll have to dig up a manual. I think manuals are fairly readily available. But a little bit of a mess. You can see I, I got some work to do on this. Probably going to be a long-term project. <laughs> you know, the thing is, these things are such a pain in the neck to, to use. Who knows, I may never actually use it. I'm going to switch for line voltage there. You can see some nice wire wound resistances there. Precision, precision at the time. Some of the wiring is a little dicey, so this thing may have led a hard life. I don't know. And I'm sure hoping those high value rheostats, look at the windings on those, very fine windings. I sure hope they're good because uh, high value rheostats are hard to find. High value rheostats that are that big in that, meaning they can dissipate quite a lot of power. They're hard to find. So I certainly hope they're good. I did notice this this tube a uh, yeah, little shaky there, and this uh, this capacitor is also a little little shaky. Oh, in fact, I can see missing a few screws. Looks like this thing had a back at one point, but I don't know. That may not be that important. See, uh, someone had uh, just on their desk. They have a little angle iron there. I'll probably take that out. I'd like to, I guess, put this thing in a rack. So there we are. Just another piece out of the garage back home. Make its way over here into the uh, into the lab, which I still need to get kind of put put together and all that. It's kind of half put together right now. Um, and uh, <laughs> this will go in the queue, the endless queue of projects to uh, get this thing up and running. Oh, it sees, looks like you got to unbend the the panel there. A little bit, yeah. Little little bit of corrosion on the on this hardware. This might be one of those things where just take it all apart. And this meter not completely center zeroed. Hopefully, I can just twiddle the uh, twiddle the screw and it'll get get centered. I haven't tested any of this, so we'll have to see. But you can see, yeah, pretty much. You got full control over filament, bias, signal amplitude, screen and suppressor voltages, uh, plate resistance. I think um, there we have just uh, just checking the uh, checking voltages on 
negative supply, positive supply, screen, plate. You can check the current on the cathode, suppressor, screen, or plate. Yeah. Hum control. Hmm. And of course you could do a shorts test. You could do the shorts test. And yep, we got retractable, well, supposedly kind of retractable plate clips, if you will. Oh, I'll have to find a replacement for that. Got a busted one. Yeah, well, there's a few busted things on this. It'll, it'll need some detail work. So there we have it. A Model 686 from Weston, good old Newark, New Jersey, which was once kind of the tube capital of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Even though a lot of the tubes that came out of Newark were bootlegs. But, yep, Newark was one of the New Newark, uh, New Jersey companies that... I'm not sure when they actually went under, but by the 70s they were uh, very much a fading, fading star. But yeah, back in the 30s and the 40s and 50s, oh yeah, they were quite the thing. Alright, hope you liked the video. Get a, a nice clean shot of the 686. It's big, it's heavy, it tests almost all the tubes you'll really ever need to really test. Obviously won't do the big the big stuff. But yeah, another project, another thing from the garage to be moved here. Alright. Hope you liked the video. Hey, leave a comment if you want, or share it around. Talk to you guys later. Bye now.